How do you feel tonight, Charlie? I feel just fine tonight, Mr. Burns. How do you feel? I never felt better in my life, Charlie. Now, say, Mr. Burns, I just thought of something. What time is it? Well, here, look at my watch. Gee whiz, it's time for the Victor Burger Show. Kellogg's Variety Pack and Kellogg's Shredded Wheat bring you the Victor Borga Show. Thank you and good evening. Tonight, we have brought a few of our musicians on stage because we are going to do a little experiment right in front of you. We can't bring the whole orchestra up because we haven't got the space. We are going to play a serious uh, symphonic composition by Tchaikovsky, and I wish that you all will watch the uh, expressions on the faces of our various musicians so you can see how serious they are and how much they love their work and the music they are playing. We are going to play Andante Cantabile, by Tchaikovsky from his fifth symphony. <laughs> on the music, don't you? It isn't. We are going to show you now what each musician thinks while playing this beautiful music. Adele Ronson. You know, nothing makes you quite so happy 
And knowing your family appreciates the little things you do to make each meal interesting and different. Of course, sometimes it brings extra trouble. And other times, it's just plain easy. Like serving Kellogg's Variety Pack. It's the best way I know to bring fun and excitement to the breakfast table because then everybody can choose a special favorite. For instance, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, the world's top favorite among ready-to-eat cereals. Pep, the famous build-up wheat cereal. Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Kellogg's Raisin Bran with fruit and flakes in one box. And Kellogg's Shredded Wheat with those new streamlined biscuits that fit right into the bowl without breaking. I think you can see what I mean about favorites. Kellogg's Variety Pack is just bursting with favorites, all in one handy carton. So, make breakfast easy for yourself and fun for everybody. Serve Kellogg's Variety, the only assortment with cereals so popular, there's never a box left over. Mildred! Oh, good evening, Mr. Borgo. Good evening, Mildred. I don't want to be disturbed because I have to practice my concert tonight, you know, and I'm a little nervous. Oh, I know. I have everything ready, Mr. Fine. Borgo. Fine. Did my dress uh -huh. suit come from the laundry? Oh, they delivered it this afternoon. I mean, well, the cleaners, I'm sorry. Oh, uh -huh. They delivered yeah. it this afternoon. Oh, I'll good. go get it for you. Fine, fine. Uh -huh. I'll run the piano a little before I... Pop that cleaner, how do you like that? I'll get some fresh air. <laughs> what? Oh, yes, you see this little gadget there. You know, there are millions of people in the world who do not know what this particular gadget is for. Unfortunately, I happen to be one of them. So <laughs> Oh, thank you, uh -huh. thank you. Say, Miller, that little, it's a little large for me. Are you sure this is my suit? Oh, it must be, Mr. Borger. Let me try it on. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Say, Miller, don't oh. tell me that you have a uh, dress suit. Oh, it isn't mine, Mr. Borger. Looks much too big for me. They must have made a mistake at the cleaners. Will you call them immediately and ask them to send my suit over because I have a concert Oh, tonight. I will. Oh, please hurry, please. This is incredible. How can I play in a suit like this? That'll be a concerto for elbow and oboe. My goodness. Well, thank God that we have a lot of time <laughs> tonight's concert and I haven't got... Yes, just a minute. Is this Mr. Victor Borger's residence? Yes. Say, uh, you look like the chap who got my dress suit. You look like the chap who got mine. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I I when I put this on, I said to myself, said I, I said, I'll bet the man who owns this coat is a little small runt. <laughs> well, I am very happy you brought it over, Mr. Treacher, Arthur Treacher. Mr. Treacher, yes, well, sir. it was awfully nice because I have a concert tonight and I needed it in a hurry. You well, see? I needed my coat in a hurry for my butling job. Oh, you're a butler? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you work? Well, I'm in between jobs at the moment. Oh, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know why I want the coat, though, don't you? Yes. Well, I always like to look well-dressed when I collect my unemployment insurance. <laughs> You couldn't use a tuxedo, of course, for that. No, that's right. Now, shall we exchange <laughs> yes, coats? Yes, let us do that. Yes. yes. Now, if you hold this a minute, sir, yes. I'll help you on with your. Thank, Thank you very much. There Thank you. you. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Glad I got this back. Nice, isn't it? I say that's yes, a wonderful fit, sir. Is. A wonderful fit. Feels better to have your own suit. Oh, well. yes, yes, I had no idea that you were that you were so handsome. My goodness, yes. Now, Mr. Borger, do I get the job or not? What job? But I'd like to be your valet, sir. I really would. You know, I'd wait on you hand and foot. 
Hand and foot. Yes. What about the rest of the body? Oh, well, I mean, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you frankly, Mr. Treacher, I have a mate with whom I'm very satisfied. Oh. She is the best maid in... Oh, oh Mr. Bobby, here's your dress. Oh, 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 no, 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 I guess a girl like tall, a tall like Miller, can only be an upstairs maid, I guess. Oh, very good. Oh, very well, yes. Yeah. Well, we had some high old times together. We really We had splendid times together. I remember once when she was ironing in the kitchen, I went in to steal a kiss. And she got the iron up to in front of her face just in time. Yes. Uh -huh. For six months, I was known as Hot Lips Treacher. <laughs> Yes, a man in your position should have a valet as well as a maid. Well, well, since you talk about it, I... Why don't I interview you? Maybe we can get together on yes. it. It would be a good idea. Yes. <laughs> Let's take place here. Yes. Sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, why did you lose your last job, sir? Well, we all resigned when the lady of the house reduced the chauffeur's salary. Why? Well, they, when they got a new car, they got a hydromatic, and she claimed that the chauffeur's left leg wasn't working. <laughs> you know, hydromatic. Oh, I see, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I thought I was the only one who knew that kind of yes, card yes, for a minute. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'd like you to address me properly, you know. Yeah. You have what to call... is your name? Treacher. Arthur Treacher. And yours? Uh, my name is Victor Borger. Oh. Well, now, how old are you? Uh, I am 38. 38? Yes, and I'm not a bit ashamed of it because I was born 42 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you born? In Denmark, in and around Denmark and oh, yeah? vicinity. Yeah. yeah. Denmark is a very small country, you know. Oh, really? Surrounded by nothing but Danes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, Arthur, I... Now, please, Arthur. I'd have called me Mr. Treacher or Sir, preferably Sir. I don't want any familiarity. Who is giving the interview here? Please don't interrupt. Now, Mr. Borger. Oh, call me Victor. <laughs> All right, Victor. Now. I want my room with an eastern exposure. I want breakfast in bed at seven every morning and the room cleaned by eight. And I want a television set with a 19-inch screen. I have very small eyes. Oh, I <laughs> well, maybe we could do that. You know, you play well enough to accompany me. Oh, you're a singer? Oh, yes, when I work around the house, I like to sing, and of course, I like an accompanist. <laughs> well, you mean I should accompany you when you sing? That's right, yes. Now, uh, there's one other question, the question of money. Money? Yes. Yeah. With inflation going on, money means nothing. I know, but if money comes back, I'd like to be prepared. <laughs> what, what is your salary, Mr... Well, I get between 75 and 85 dollars a week. That's exactly what I'm going to give you. Ten dollars. Huh? <laughs> well, ten dollars is between 75 and 85, isn't it? I've never heard of such a thing. That's well, preposterous. Oh, you don't like it? I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have a cheap... I have a, a, a better idea. Why don't we exchange jobs, for instance? Huh? You will be my butler, yes. and I will accompany you whenever you need piano playing. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Is that a deal? Rather. Okay. Yes. Mr. Treacher, my coat, please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You Danes have strange customs. <laughs> Know why you ought to say Kellogg's before you say shredded wheat? Well, here's the answer. Here's why you ought to say Kellogg's before you say shredded wheat. Kellogg's shredded wheat fits the bowl so neat. That's because the biscuits are streamlined. That's right, streamlined. Kellogg's shredded wheat biscuits are streamlined to fit the bowl perfectly without breaking. That means no spilled milk, no waste, and no messy crumbs. You can have two biscuits or just one. And there's no mistaking that good nut sweet flavor. One taste tells you it's Kellogg's shredded wheat. Toasted just right. 100% whole wheat. 
And here's another fact, every box is packed with three extra biscuits. What a treat. So it's always smart to say Kellogg's before you say shredded wheat. Get Kellogg's, Kellogg's shredded wheat. You'll really like it, I know. Victor and Arthur, after a bit of financial discussion, have decided to exchange services. Arthur is to buttle for Victor, who will in return accompany Arthur at the piano. It's a very unusual arrangement, and we find Arthur and Victor on the concert stage trying each other out. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to introduce to you a concert given by my employer. Employer? No, employee. No, co-worker. No, I know. My good friend and pianist, Vic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, now I know what that thing is for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm a little high. Yes. That's good. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> I think my finger was too wet. <laughs> All right? Yeah, I will try it once more because maybe you can do with the other finger better. That might be it. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> the first number will be one sung by myself, Mr. Arthur Treacher inspired by the wild open spaces in the western terrain and is entitled Ragtime Cowboy Joe. <laughs> to the roar of his repeater, how they run. Where does it run? When they hear the fellow's gun, because the western folks all know. What do they know? That he is a high-polluting, shooting, scooting son of a gun from Arizona. Ragtime cowboy, ragtime cowboy, ragtime cowboy. With mashed potatoes, ragtime cowboy, Joe. Pleasure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tonight is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Vo Victor Borga in the piano solo entitled Excerpts from Rachmaninoff's Second Piano Concerto Number no. Two by Rachmaninoff. <laughs> we play excerpts because we don't know the whole thing. <laughs> this concerto was originally written for approximately 90 piece or, uh, symphony orchestra, I would rather say, uh, due to circumstances which are only controlled by our sponsor, we seem to be about 47 short. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't notice the difference because we play it very fast. <laughs> I would like to explain to you a few things about this concerto before I play it. When you hear this, the introduction. Then when you hear this, that is the main theme. Then when you hear this, this is definitely 
is something wrong because that's Tchaikovsky. <laughs> you won't hear any of this because we are now going to play excerpt from Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto, number two. Chip. Thank you, Mr. Butler. You have... That was splendid, sir. Splendid. You. Yes. you have bottles so beautiful for me. Tonight. Now tell me, sir, what time do you like me to serve breakfast? Breakfast? Yes. I would say around nine o'clock in the morning. All right, sir. Uh, Mr. Twitcher, what do you serve for breakfast? Well, I serve toast and coffee and a heaping bowl of Kellogg's shredded wheat. Oh, I can half the way.
We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed performing for you. Uh, next week, at the same time, at the same station, we will be back again, and we hope that you will also. And don't forget, of course, that Kellogg's is the greatest name in cereals. We all know it, and you ought to know it, and I know that most of you know it already, so I don't have to tell you. <laughs> so that's why I did. <laughs> so, good night for, to for tonight. <laughs> but if you... Marshall. Maybe you know someone who's tried the famous Kellogg's all-brand plan. As a matter of fact, thousands of people have written the Kellogg Company in Battle Creek, Michigan, to thank them for this wonderful cereal. You see, this is more than a nourishing, ready-to-eat cereal, more than a delicious breakfast food. Kellogg's all-brand is the world's most famous regulating cereal. Now, if you need more bulk in your diet, give Kellogg's all-brand a 10-day trial. Chances are you might never need a laxative. If you're not entirely satisfied, return the empty carton to the Kellogg people in Battle Creek and they'll send you double your money back. I think you'll enjoy the delicious nut-like flavor of this fine cereal, Kellogg's All Brand. So, give it a try, won't you? Pack and Kellogg's Corn Flakes bring you the Victor Borga Show. very kind and good evening. Uh, you have seen our faces here for weeks and weeks, and we thought for a change that uh, we would show something else. You might uh, be getting a little tired of seeing the same faces over and over and over again. So now we are going to do a sketch for you where you don't see anything but the feet. And uh, it begins right now. Once upon a time, there was a young man and though it is difficult to tell from this angle, he was handsome, and he was rich. His shoes were made of the most expensive couplers, and his socks were hand-knit with beautiful black and white clocks down the side. But he wasn't happy. Now, when you are unhappy, money doesn't mean a thing. He dreamed of having someone to share his life with him, but he couldn't find anyone who loved him for himself. He simply couldn't relax. He was on the go continually. He went to the prize fight. <laughs> he wrote the 
subway to see how the other half lives. to the ballet. And there he saw her. She was lovely. She danced divinely. His heart skipped the beat. Something snapped. His shoelace broke. It was love at first sight. She got an ovation. Flowers were thrown on the stage. She took four curtain calls. back to the stage door to see her again. There were crowds waiting for the girls to come out. Rich men. Poor men. Bobby Soxers. Sailors. Soldiers. When she finally did appear, he didn't recognize her. She wasn't wearing her ballet slippers. He didn't know which way to turn. When he came home that night, he didn't sleep a wink. to the theater and applied for a job. The man behind the desk just happened to need someone to work backstage at the ballet. So every night he watched her performance from the wings. One night, as she came off the stage, she tripped over a bit of scenery. He caught her as she fell. He couldn't resist her. He lifted her up in his arms. She was furious. She had a tantrum. She stamped her feet. She kicked. She struggled. For you see, she was looking for a rich man. So she ordered him away. He slowly started to leave, dragging himself away. He suddenly turned. He told her all about himself and what he could do for her. Then he proposed to her. They were married. And they lived happily ever after. For at last, 
He had found someone who loved him for what he was. Rich. When you were a kid? Well, here's a young lady who has it down to a science. Well, my goodness, what's going on here? Come to think of it, Susie, that's a good way to show how many favorite cereals you get in Kellogg's variety. Ten packages, seven cereals, and every one a real favorite. And say, have you noticed that there's a brand new lineup in Kellogg's variety? Now there are three packages of cornflakes. And there's Kellogg's Pets, Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Raisin Bran, Shredded Wheat, and other favorites besides. Each package a generous individual serving. And the wonderful thing about Kellogg's variety is that you get all these favorites in one handy carton. It's so easy to serve. You just bring it to the table like this. And let each member of the family choose a favorite cereal every morning. Like this? Mm -hmm. And youngsters love opening their own. My, doesn't that look crisp and good? Mmm! And just you remember this, Susie, that no matter which cereal you choose from Kellogg's Variety, you'll always come up with a favorite. That's why there are never any boxes left over when you get this assortment. <laughs> For a concert I'm having two two days from now. Is there anything you would like to hear particularly? Would you like to hear the Polonaise by Chopin? You will. Is there anyone here who can play it? <laughs> Sick and tired of that. I want to play a little of uh, C sharp minor waltz by Chopin. C-sharp minor. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> <laughs>
just a minute. Well, what can I do for you? Look, when Mildred comes in, will you tell her that I dropped my little baby off and she should take care of it till I get back? Mildred said she'd babysit for me any time. Wasn't that nice of her? Yes, oh, and here are the yes. bottles. Oh, I forgot. There's a note in there which tells her what to do and what not to do. I've got to run now. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye. Bye. Oh. Hello. Hello. Mama. Go and get Mildred. Oh. Mildred! 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 Go on. Oh, my goodness, what do I do now? Uh, here's a message from Mildred. She is I'm feeling low this morning, I guess. <laughs> There's your dear Mr. Borger. She writes big, doesn't she? I'm sorry I had to leave without letting you know. But my best friend is getting married and I had to attend. I won't be back till late. The way she spells late. L-A-T-E. That's right. Um, <laughs> Mildred Hughes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what to do with you, but... Yeah, cock, cock, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Blood. Maybe this will do. This is... I know how to take care of you, little fellows. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I better read the note here. It says, when the baby cries, what to do? I'm not so used to this business here, but... The baby starts to cry, that means it is hungry. I have prepared her milk, which you will find in the leather bag. Before feeding the baby, make sure that the milk is the right temperature. How do I know? The best way... Oh, the best way to find out is to try a few drops on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't choke before you get the milk. Wait a minute. There it is. Whoa, that's all right. <laughs> ah, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> Coming, another coming, yeah, another coming, another coming. I wonder if her mother thought she was going to stay here for. Yeah, wait a minute, I can't keep up with you. That's all there is. No, there's one more here. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. It's a cute little baby, isn't it? Cute little baby elephant. Well, I think that did it. Maybe I... I'm going to play it. Better read the note and see if there's any more. 
If the baby continues to cry after being fed, the next best thing to do is to hum her to sleep. I'm going to hum you to sleep, my little fella. Yeah. Hum, hum. Mm-hmm. No, wait a minute. This is the wrong key. I better play. Yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? Yeah, I hit my eye. That's right. Mm. Well, I'm going to play another little number for you. I think you'll like me. <laughs> 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 Come on, I'm doing it myself now. Is there anything you would like to hear particularly? Lily? Oh, that was the other place. Wait a minute. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yankee Doodle. that girl be doing? Honestly, she's only on her way to school, but you'd think she was getting ready for the junior prom. Keena, you've got your coat on. Now, you're not going to skip breakfast again this morning. That's final. But, Mother, there isn't time. Look, Keena, you're an attractive girl, and I want you to stay that way. One way to take good care of yourself is to eat a good, nourishing breakfast. Now, then, everything's ready. So, open your coat and sit down. There's juice, Kellogg's cornflakes, and a nice, tall glass of milk. Well, okay, Mom. I never have been able to pass these up. And you know something, Mom? What? I have to admit, when I eat a hearty breakfast like this, I can get through the whole morning a lot better. I'm glad to know that. You know, they say Kellogg's Corn Flakes gives you more punch till lunch. It's the power of corn in each flake. So, I guess it must be true, huh? Must be. And another thing. They sure taste good. Yes, it's still possible to get accommodations on the Liberty. I can't get you as good a stateroom as I expected, but it's worth it when you get there. Oh, England, France, Belgium. Boy, I can hardly wait to get there. I think we can set you up a desirable tour. Well, my wife wants to. Pardon me, John. Hello? Yes? Well, if you'll come down and see our Miss Johnson, I think she can arrange a very nice African tour. Yes, we have very interesting African tours. Yes, we do. That is... Uh, what? Pardon me just a second. I couldn't help overhearing the last conversation. Why is it that everybody's going to Europe? Oh, don't you like to travel? I certainly do, but don't you know that the most beautiful places in the whole world are right here in the United States? Hello? Why must everybody go to Europe? Is there anybody around here who is going to stay in the United States for a vacation? We are. are. Okay, let's hear about it. I'm going to hop a train for me or Albuquerque. Take the lake. Let the Turks off Turkey. I'll trade Bermuda for St. Paul or Duluth and never 
sails of Martinique. I'll drink from Florida's fountain of youth. I do not want to hear Africa speak. I'll shut my mouth down south in old Savannah. He's black, I see he's wet in Louisiana. You won't see me sailing over the sea. For foreign lands have no thirst. Cause I'm here to tell you that I'm gonna see America first. My horn I'll toot for Buda in Montana. Let Spain have Spain, my bulls in Indiana. I'll learn geography at Harvard or Duke. To just a loose to drink a toast. And when we leave sunny Dubuque, I'll take him perhaps to the Japanese coast. I'll sing the song in these United Spaces. It ain't no fun to run to foreign places. From way out west to the hills of Vermont, I'll be so proud that I'll burst. Cause I'm here to tell you that I'm going to see America first. I'll hail, I'll hail a car, a car. And sell, and sell, oh well, oh well, when I reach Oklahoma, I grow apples out in Washington State, sail down Chesapeake Bay, but I'll be early cause I got a date, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I ate. I'll take a piece, a piece, a piece, when I reach South Dakota, eat all the cheese, I please in Minnesota, you won't see me sailing over the sea for foreign lands I've no thirst cause I'm here to tell you that I'm gonna see all there is to see down in Tennessee and in Nome, Alaska, Omaha, Nebraska take a tour of old Missouri, then I rip down the Mississippi hip, hip. cause I'm here to tell you and 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 I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to tell you that, that I'm gonna see America first I guess there are a lot of places to see in the United States. And I'd like to tell you that this little song was written for our show by Jimmy Melton, who is the head writer on our show. And I liked it so much that I thought you should hear it. And now you did. And I hope you like it as much that you will tell somebody about it who will write in and ask to hear it again. Because it's always nice to do a thing like this that we know. <clears throat> um, we... Uh, uh, at the time now where we are about to close, and we hope you had a nice day with us. Thank you for listening and for looking. And in about a week from now, at the same station, I hope in the meantime that uh, your family and my family, in that respect, I mean the Kellogg family of cereals, will be together all week and for a long time to come. See you next week. Say, do you remember seeing a picture like this when you were a youngster? Right now, the man has a big frown on his face, but you just turn the picture around, and he's all smiles. Well, my guys, I've known people who've changed for the better in the way they look and feel almost as quickly. They've tried the famous Kellogg's all-brand plan, and the change has been just wonderful. You see, this is more than a nourishing, ready-to-eat cereal. It's more than a wholesome, delicious breakfast food. The important thing is that Kellogg's all-brand is the world's most famous regulating cereal. Now, these people I mentioned who learned to smile again needed bulk in their diet. Perhaps you do, too. If you do, give Kellogg's All-Brand a 10-day trial. 
Others have done so have found that they never need a laxative. If you're not completely satisfied, just return the empty carton to the Kellogg Company, and they'll send you double your money back. I know that you'll really enjoy the delicious, nut-like flavor of Kellogg's All Brand, so start out this week, won't you? This is Victor. Oh, hello, Victor. What can I do for you? Nothing. Well, <laughs> well I'm tied up right now. Call me again later, will you? Yeah. Well, how do you like that? He knows what he wants, doesn't he? <laughs> what is that? Isn't the silliest thing I've ever heard. As a matter of fact, I hope that phone doesn't ring anymore because I'm going to practice my piano. You know, this house is a little difficult to practice in because there are so many sounds. If the phone doesn't ring, the doorbell rings, you know? See what I mean? Ah. house to play. Oh, by the way, I hope Mildred has this door fixed. You know, this week, every time somebody gets in and out. See if she has fixed it. No, it hasn't been fixed. Well, I hope I can get a little quiet now for a rest. First. Ah, it's a nice day to rehearse it.
Ah, uh, let me see, what do we play next? Oh! <laughs> your imagination, it is a funny buzzing sound. What's buzzing, cousin? Why, it's amazing. It's a honeycomb coat. And I'd like you please to note that it's fashioned to be worn around a raisin. Around a raisin? That is amazing. What raisin wears a coat of honeycomb? I'll tell you. Only the raisins in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Just look at them, plump and juicy, all mixed with crisp, nut-sweet bran flakes. Imagine, fruit and flakes in one box, delicious and nourishing. Kellogg's Honeycomb Coated Raisins, plus the good whole grain nourishment of wheat and bran. So, when you're shopping, always say Kellogg's. Before you say, Raisin Bran. He gets lots of praise in man. That's because it's Kellogg's Raisin Bran. <laughs> well... I have to co uh, compose a little number. Well, I have to compose a modern song hit, and you know, that is done in a special way. You might think that uh, the modern composers do it the same way the old masters did it. Uh-uh. I'm going to show you exactly how we do it now. We don't sit up day at night waiting for the inspiration. Uh-uh. We take a pile of music from the old masters, then we go through it, and then we cut a little here and cut a little there. And then, <laughs> you'll be surprised. Now, let's see what we have got here. Here we have a little Tchaikovsky. Peter Idiot Tchaikovsky. <laughs> That's a pretty theme. It'll be popular that now. This is no good. But I'll get something else. Ah, Beethoven, a little Beethoven here. Ah, Harry is Beethoven. <laughs> There's something from his operator. Harry and Beth. <laughs> ah, let's see what this says here. Now, this is too jivey. We can't use that, is it? <laughs> we need something that's a little more... Nah, this is no good. Ah, wait a minute. Something is... Yeah. The Second Hungarian Rhapsody by Schlitt. <laughs> <laughs> He was the one who died just before he unfinished his last symphony, wasn't it? <laughs> ah, poor fellow. Ah, let's see what he has done. Ah, that's too old. Let's see. Other 
Christmas right here. Yeah, here's one that's about two days younger. Nobody will recognize that one. Yeah, we can use that. Now I'm going to cut some of that up because we don't need all of it and we don't want anybody to recognize it. Now, let me see now. I'll just take a little trim here, a little trim here. All it needs now is shampoo, I guess. <laughs> That's a little too much yet. <laughs> now, that's it. Now we need a few more bars from something else. And I wonder, here's something else. <clears throat> I can't read it. Now let's see. <clears throat> Here is the Blue Daniel. Wonder what we have got for the finale. Hey, we haven't got much left. Yes, indeed. Yeah, a little Shostakovich. Ah, Shostakovich. <laughs> Just a moment. <laughs> now we better wait till he gets sober. Now what else? Have we got? <laughs> Here is the last act from the opera, Aida. This is what we need, the last bar. Now, yeah. <clears throat> I'll make a nice finish. Now, we have the Serenade by Schubert and the Blue Daniel by Strauss. I shall now play for you what we have here so far. Sorry, I think I have been a little too fast there. I need an A. <laughs> Somebody have an A? <laughs> well, here's an A from the right in the middle of Madame Butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> that really came in handy, didn't it? <laughs> now, that is it. And then we have the Blue Daniel. The last one here, the last chord from Ricoletto. No, Traviata, I'm sorry. That one, Ricoletto is a half tone law. <laughs> now we are going to put them all together and we will play it as a wall. And we will call it the Blue Serra Daniel by Strubert. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Kellogg salutes the city of Detroit, Michigan, on its 250th anniversary. And when you visit the great city of Detroit this summer, why don't you drop over to the neighboring town of Battle Creek and visit the Kellogg uh, factory there because the Kellogg people will be waiting for you at any time to visit them. And see you next week. Thank you. Hello, this is Rex Marshall. Just checking the barometer there. You know, it's interesting how that gadget tells you about the weather, whether it's going to be cloudy or fair. And you know, people have barometers too. Yes, their faces. That's where a change in a person shows up first. And you know, thanks to Kellogg's All Brand, millions of folks who used to frown now wear sunny smiles on their faces. Yes, they discovered a need for more bulk in their diet, and then they learned about Kellogg's All Brand, how it's more than a nourishing, ready-to-eat cereal, more than a wholesome, delicious breakfast food. They found out why All Brand is known as the world's most famous regulating cereal. I want to tell you that lots of people who eat All Brand regularly and drink plenty of water have said goodbye to laxative. It may be that you need more bulk in your diet. If you do, give All Brand a 10-day trial. You must be satisfied or Kellogg's will send double your money back. That sounds pretty fair, doesn't it? Who is it? Does Mr. Victor Borga live here? Yes, what do you want? We're fixing the streets outside. I drive the steamroller, and I got something for you. You drive the steamroller? Well, what is it? It's Mr. Borga. I'll just slip him under the door. <laughs> oh, Mr. Borga, I do wish you'd watch out. Variety Pack and Kellogg's Shredded Wheat bring you The Victor Varga Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last week, I showed you how I teach some of my new pupils to play the piano. Uh, pupils who represent various uh, professions in life. I would like to continue and show you a few more. For instance, uh, I have a new pupil who is the secretary, and this is the way I teach her to play the piano. You know, it takes a little time for people to change, you know, and get into a different habit. <laughs> well, she puts the music in here first, of course. And then she plays. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let me see how does this thing work here. Yeah, it goes back again, I guess. This thing. Find the name on it. Victor. How do you spell Borger? B. Well, whatever it is. Now, it will take a little time for a secretary, of course, to learn to play that way. Uh, the next person is a famous card player, a poker player. The way he learns to play the piano is, of course, this way. Sit down. Yeah, the cards. He mixes the music a little bit, of course. <laughs> Make piles of them. Now. I have to see now the, the, the B flat here. <laughs> the sharp. Yeah. Now the other fellow. Poker player. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. coughs> 
<laughs> the next is the doctor. He uses, of course, a metronome to keep the rhythm. This is outright. I'm sick. I need a vacation. <laughs> well, we'll fix that now. He plays. <laughs> that was the doctor. <laughs> I have a little boy who plays with me. He's a... Oh, the heart's still piece over here. Pardon me. He's the shoeshine boy. And here's the way he plays, of course. His first lesson. Shoes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the last pupil for today is the sea captain. He starts out, of course, with putting the music on. And we have a little thing for him here. <laughs> uh -huh, second bar, northeast. First time on the Victor Borger Show, we'd like you to meet a lovely lady by the name of Althea Murphy. Let's drop in for a chat. Hello there. I'm Althea Murphy. I was just looking for a recipe that my neighbor gave me last year. You know, swapping recipes is a custom that's as old as the hills, I guess you could say. But there's a trend nowadays to swap hints that make things easier for us housewives especially during the warm summer months. So I'd like to pass along this hint that will make breakfast easier for you. Get Kellogg's Variety Pack. Nothing could be easier to serve, and yet you couldn't find anything that would please everybody at the breakfast table. Just look. You get all of these fine variety of cereals, top favorites, in one handy carton with Kellogg's Variety. All you do is bring Kellogg's variety to the table, a bowl of fruit, a cool pitcher of milk. Then let everyone choose and open a generous individual serving of his favorite cereal, each crisp and fresh and good. I really mean it. You can make breakfast easy for yourself and fun for everybody else when you serve Kellogg's variety pack. This is the assortment to get. The one with so many favorite cereals that there's never a box left over. Just you try it. You'll see. <laughs> vacation now. You know, it's a little difficult to figure out where to go. I mean, there's so many beautiful places in this country you can go. Um, let me see what we have here. Arizona, the land of enchantment. It's a lovely place. I've been there many a time. Colorado, Grand Canyon. Wonderful. It's hard to make up one's mind about it. California, Oh. <laughs> How do you like that, California? Well, they have made so many jokes about the rain in California. I want to tell you it actually isn't a joke because I have lived there for a long time myself. Anytime you see somebody from California with a tan, 
It isn't a tan, it is rust. <laughs> well, let me see, where can I else? Oh, here's a cute little one. Rhode Island, how do you like that? <laughs> isn't that the cutest thing? Well, I guess you can have a good time in... Oh, here's one from Denmark, my birthplace. Mm. So you might think it is funny for a country like Denmark to have a smaller, a larger map, of course, than Rhode Island, which is much larger than Denmark. But you see, this is, this is actual size of Denmark. This is not just a map of it. <laughs> so you can understand why I left. I mean, we had a whole family over there. And <laughs> I was just one too many. That reminds me, this year I'm going to fly. And I just happen to think how strange it is that a few years ago, actually only a few years ago, the White Brothers, they could fly 123 feet. Isn't that amazing? Nowadays, they have airplanes so big that you can almost chase the hostess 123 feet. Mildred, by the way, I just happen to think, Mildred. Yes, Mr. Gordon. Uh, Mildred, have anybody called up regarding the ad I had in the paper this morning? She didn't want to rent my apartment out for the summer. This is our last show. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Borges, several people called. And I told them they could come up any time this afternoon and look at it. Oh, that is wonderful. What are you going to do yourself, Mildred, this summer? I'm going to be counselor at a girls' camp. Ah, uh, isn't that wonderful? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It is fun. Yeah, yes. I can imagine. I'm in charge of basketball. Basketball? Uh -huh. mm. Do you play part of the basketball yourself? I hold the basket. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, Milda, take care of these maps. There might be somebody oh, yes. there to look for their apartment here for this summer. Coming, 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 coming. Yes, uh, Mr. Borger. Yes, sir. Yeah, I guess you come to see the apartment. Yes. That's right. You saw the ad in the paper, huh? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm, very nice. Yes, mm. it is a nice mm. apartment. It looks like you have a good floor here. Oh, definitely. The finest floor that could be in this apartment, I don't know. Uh, when you uh, walk on this floor, uh, does it creak? No. Mm. Uh, I haven't noticed that. I don't... I have no... No, no complaints about that. Uh, what about when one plays the piano? Does it disturb anybody? No, I sometimes have played all night and all day. No complaints. But I'll show you. I'll play a little and I'll see you. No complaints. <laughs> No complaints. <laughs> it's just what I've been looking for. Yes? You want to take the apartment? No, I'm taking the apartment right downstairs. I just want to make sure I'm not disturbed. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> well, that took care of that. But I guess that somebody soon will come and take the apartment because we only had about 20 minutes left of the show. <laughs> and I just hate to... <laughs> To leave the apartment available for all. Ah, there's something. Coming, 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 coming. Coming, 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 coming. Hello. Mr. Victor Borger? Yes, madam. This ad states you wish to rent your place for the summer. Yes, I certainly do. Yes. Would you like to come in and take a look Thank at it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Why, it's just what I've been looking for. It's lovely, just like my apartment back home. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Where do you live? Washington, D.C. Oh, a beautiful city. Yes, isn't yeah. it? I envy you. you oh, know. and this window. In my apartment, I have a window just like this overlooking the Capitol building. Oh, my. Yes, I certainly do miss that view. You miss the view? Yes. Just one second. We can fix that. We can do anything here. Wait just a second. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> hey, boys. Let's have the uh, Washington view Capitol. <laughs> How do you like that? Simply divine. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? It makes me homesick. Oh, you take the apartment then? No, I'm going home. Goodbye, Mr. Borger. <laughs> well, boys, fly it. Well, we'll find somebody sooner or later. It shouldn't be difficult to rent an apartment like this, huh? I took it immediately when it was offered to me. <laughs> well, I guess they'll practice a little bit. Somebody else coming. I thought 
thought you said this floor was found proof. <laughs> Told you anything might happen here. Police! Look at that! They're chasing somebody. Machine gun implement. Oh, yes. Can I show you the apartment? What? I said, can I show you the apartment? It's for rent. I thought you... Did apartment? You Renting? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's what I came for. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's pretty hot outside, isn't it? Hot? What do you mean, hot? How did you know? Well, I can see it. Take a look at you. <laughs> look very warm. You like the view here? You know, on a clear day, you can see way up the river. <laughs> What are you, a wise guy? No, not at all. Can I take this? Keep your hands off this. Oh, I guess you are very fond of the instrument, huh? You bet. I never let it out of my view. Ah, oh, I can understand that. I'm, I'm in the business myself. So you in my imagine? business? Are you kidding? Really? No, I've been in it for years. Well, I've never seen you before. You got a record? Got a record? I got a whole album. <laughs> I have records all over the country. Say, you and I ought to get along pretty good. Sit down, Thank buddy. you. I mean, sit down. <laughs> Listen, uh, I always like to talk to a fellow uh, professional like you. What kind of work do you do? Well, I, uh, I work alone. You That's see. smart. Tell me, uh, why are you renting your apartment? Because it's getting a little hot around here for the summertime. I know just what you mean. <laughs> How long you been in this racket? Since I was six years old, and my parents were very proud of me. You ought to have a lot of experience. I certainly have a lot of experience. Would you like to have a, a cold drink? Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Mildred! Mildred, who is this Mildred? Mildred? I thought we was alone. Oh, take it easy. That's my mate. You are very nervous, sir. Yes, Mr. Gorgon. Uh, Mildred, um... Say, I could use a dame like this. She'd make a swell lookout. I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very funny gentleman, Mildred. Will you serve some lemonade, please? Certainly, Mr. Borgen. Thank you, Mildred. Would you like to see the rest of the apartment? No, not just now. I just wanted to see if the coast was clear. Well, I read the weather report this morning and it said that in the afternoon it would be a little cloudy. Hey, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like. A guy with a sense of humor. You know, you got a pretty swell layout here. You must be doing all right. Oh, I've been doing all right for years. As a matter of fact, last week I did a wonderful job. Yeah, if where? I may say so myself. Where'd you do it? Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall? Doing a concert? Yeah, doing a concert, sure. What <laughs> nerve? Did you work alone? Uh-uh, Stokowski was there too. Stokowski? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I heard of him. Bubsy Stokowski. <laughs> How do you do your job? What do you use? My hands, of course. Oh, a strangler. Are you happy at your work? Happy? I love it. I practice here every day. Would you want to try it out? None of your funny business on me, buddy. Wait, this is not funny. They only take a Keep minute. away from me. Stay away from me now. <laughs> These temperamental artists ought to want to play a little tune for him. Well, I still haven't rented the apartment. This is... The most ridiculous thing, I thought that there were shorter apartments in here in New York, but apparently they seem not to be. As a matter of fact, I don't mind staying in New York myself during the summertime because there is no mosquitoes here, you know. It's one of the few towns there are no mosquitoes in the summertime. They only come here in the wintertime. They are too smart. Why should they come here and be killed in the summertime? <laughs> but I still haven't rented the apartment. You know, it's not... How do you like it? It's not 
what we want. Let's go. Gallagher and Sheen and Weber and Fields. Well, here's a brand new team with a brand new act. Here's why you want to say Kellogg's before you say shredded wheat. Kellogg's shredded wheat fits the bowl so neat. That's because the biscuits are streamlined. That's right, streamlined. Kellogg's shredded wheat biscuits are streamlined to fit the bowl perfectly without breaking. That means no spilled milk, no waste, and no messy crumbs. You can have two biscuits or just one. And there's no mistaking that good nut sweet flavor. One taste tells you it's Kellogg's shredded wheat. Toasted just right. 100% whole wheat. And here's another fact. Every box is packed. With three extra biscuits, what a treat. So it's always smart to say Kellogg's before you say shredded wheat. Get Kellogg's, Kellogg's, shredded wheat. You'll really like it, I know. You know something? I haven't rented the apartment yet. Well, I guess... We will have to keep it as it is for this all. You know, may I take the opportunity right now to thank everyone in the audience for sending out those wonderful letters to us of appreciation. You do not know how encouraging it is for us here on this side of the cameras to receive those beautiful words and words of encouragement. We will be back with this show in September. And I hope that you will miss us in the meantime, of course. And may I express my sincere thanks on behalf of Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, the whole staff working with me here on this show, you can always rest assured that we will do our best in the future as we have done so far. And I hope you will stay with us and like it. Thank you very much so far. <clears throat> that, of course, doesn't eliminate the fact that I haven't rented my apartment and I could use that extra money. Yes? Do you have a telegram for me, sir? Oh, no, Mr. Borger. I'm Tom Corbett, space cadet. Tom Corbett, space cadet. Welcome, Tom Corbett. Well, 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 what brings you here, Tom Corbett? Well, sir, since you're going on your vacation starting tonight, I'm taking over for you, and I can kind of use this space. Starting next week, Wonderful. same station, same time. I guess it's moon time, isn't well, it? Well, you could call it that, yes. <laughs> okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will stay tuned to this station at the same time, the same hour, which is actually the same time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Corbett will be on with you until we come back September 1st, and I'm sure you will all love it, and be sure that I will be looking myself if nobody else will, but I'm sure you don't need more audience than you have. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Borger. Have a nice vacation. And good luck to you, Tom. Good luck, and luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a swell kit, that Tom Corbett. And now I guess... Hi, Tom. <laughs> he just took off <laughs> his shoes. <laughs> May I be a little commercial before we go on the air? My sponsor has, of course, taken advantage of the time to talk about the Kellogg greatest name in cereals and what goes with it. And as a matter of fact, I told him he doesn't have to talk so much about it because we all know it, and so do you. And not just by being told, but by experience yourself, of course. Uh, may I, as I said before, 
take the liberty of telling you that I have made a couple of albums for Columbia, which seems to be a secret. <laughs> Personally, I don't care whether these albums are sold or not because, you know, the government takes the profit anyhow. <laughs> so why get excited about a few hundred thousand dollars more or less? <laughs> but I have been in the United States 10 years and I've been extremely happy over here. So what I intended to say was that if you like our government as much as I do, please buy the album. <laughs> Well, this, as you by now know, is our last show, and I shall now be seated at the piano and play the last tune for the season, and I hope you will enjoy it. Until September, see you again. Hi there, this is Rex Marshall. You know, I was just thinking how well this scale illustrates something very important. You see, right now it's all out of kilter. But when you put the proper amount of weight on the other side, it brings it back into balance. Well, you know, it's amazing how many people are just the same way. They go around feeling all out of kilter because they're not getting the proper amount of bulk in their diet. Now, perhaps that's your trouble. Well, if it is, this may be your answer. 
Kellogg's All Bran, the world's most famous regulating cereal. You know, thousands of people eat All Bran every day because it provides the bulk that so many folks need to keep regular. Why don't you give Kellogg's All Bran a 10-day trial and drink plenty of water? You may never need a laxative. Of course, if you're not entirely satisfied, just return the empty box to the Kellogg Company and they'll send you double your money back. Gentlemen, the Cavalcade of Stars is proud to present that incomparable performer, that international favorite, Mr. Victor Borger. I think... <laughs> well, for my fourth and last number, I'm going to play a little... Uh, I have a request. See, I did a couple of months ago on a television show. Uh, thank you. Something... <laughs> you saw it, huh? Uh, something that uh, explains how the modern composers nowadays compose the modern song hit. I'm not going to do that again because they did it, but now I'm going to show you how the old masters uh, were inspired to some of their favorite compositions. You know, for instance, like, for instance, uh, Chopin, you know, he composed the minute walls so that every morning he could play it three times in the kitchen so his wife would cook the eggs the way, the way he wanted. So, well, well, well. Beethoven. Harry S. Beethoven. <laughs> you know, he composed, he composed the uh, uh, Moonlight Sonata for the girl and so on. But he also wrote the Minuet in G. And he was inspired by, by a, a new uh, housekeeper they had. Now, he was sitting one day noodling around at the piano, you know, and just wait a minute, I want to see if it's in tune. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> he was noodling around a little, but he didn't know exactly. Then he saw this new housekeeper come in, and he had the inspiration for the minuet in G. G! G! Well, he died later. Now, uh... <laughs> then there was a famous composer who had a girlfriend, and she was kind of, uh, yeah, she was kind of, of, she had a hiccup, you know, she was a famous dancer, a ballet dancer, but she suffered from hiccups. So every time she danced, she had these horrible hiccups, and that was very annoying. So he composed a little piece of music for her, so that when she danced, she could do her hiccups so nobody would notice them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he died too. Then, uh, <laughs> then there was the, uh, Strauss, you know, Joey Strauss. He was... <laughs> yeah. Well, Joey Strauss... Wait a minute. This is... <laughs> well, this is television. You have to look uh, kind of decent. Um, he composed the Blue Daniel. And he got this inspiration by eating cherries and spitting out the pit. Very simple. <laughs> But he'll never die. <laughs> well, then, well, then we come to Franz Liszt. As people call him Schlitt, because he was one of the famous composers who made Milwaukee famous. And he also... <laughs> <laughs> he composed the second Hungarian rap. As a matter of fact, I came here tonight to play a serious piece of music, and we are going to play it any minute now. Just let me finish this thing here. Um, if I ever get through with it. But now... <laughs> see, Franz Schlitt was inspired to his second Hungarian Rhapsody, number two, because he already had written the first one. And then, <laughs> see, he was invited to a party, and on his way there, he was inspired. And he was so excited, so when he came in the house, that he rushed over to the piano, because he wanted to see what it sounded like. He wanted to see what it sounded like. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why didn't he want to listen to what it looked like? <laughs> well, that is English, and that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Well, anyway, he rushed over to the piano and all the guests came over to shake hands with him. How do you do, Mr. Schlitz? You know, he was so famous and so on and so And he had to make a lot of pauses and that's why the beginning of the second Hungarian Rhapsody have so many pauses. That were precious. <laughs> well, how do you do? <laughs> well, how do you do? Nice to see you. Now, don't overdo it now. Later, 
Well, we'll wait till later. Later on the same evening. <laughs> the thing is a little drafty. You better be ready. <laughs> later on the same evening, he had something to eat and drink, but he had most to drink because he wasn't very hungry. And that is why the second part of this Hungarian Rhapsody is a little gay, if I may say. And I may. <laughs> Last moment. of music we have cooked up together, we are going to... Yeah, I'm going to hurry up now. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to... Well... <coughs> well you, you have, we have to hurry up because we have... Uh, and... Uh, for my last... No last number now, I'm going to play except from Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto number two by Rachmaninoff, who also wrote the music, by the way. <coughs> we play except because we don't know the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I have to explain this to you. This is very important. Now, this concerto was originally written for 90-piece orchestra. <laughs> for some reason, we seem to be about 77 short. <laughs> now, only the sponsor can answer to that one. Yeah, now, uh, it, there's another thing. Uh, <laughs> this is very important. I have to explain this to you. Now, there's one important thing about Tchaikovsky I want you to know. Uh, no, not Tchaikovsky. Uh, who may I play? Oh, Rachmaninoff. That's the one. <laughs> have to watch it. Uh, <laughs> there's one important thing about Rachmaninoff you, I want you to know, and that is that I don't play him very well. <laughs> Thank you. Now, when you hear... This is important. When you hear this... It's Rachmaninoff's second piano concert. When you hear this, that is the introduction to it. And when you hear this... That's the main theme. And then when you hear this... Then there's definitely something wrong, because that's Tchaikovsky. <laughs> so, are uh, we again? Here we go. Maestro, ready? Are you ready? ready? Fine. I'm not. Wait a minute. <laughs> Here we go.
ladies and gentlemen, we now take you to the White House where the entertainment for the inaugural ball has already begun. I take great pleasure in presenting Victor Borga. Good evening. It is a great pleasure for me, of course, to be at this ball tonight. And I would like to begin with a little number for this special occasion. I would like to play the dance of the hour. That will be, of course, tonight, the dance of the Eisenhower. <laughs> However, before I indulge in playing that number, I should like to play the second Hungarian Rhapsody by Liszt. I don't like the first one. <laughs> Pardon me for sitting down because it's very uncomfortable to stand up and play. <laughs> These pianos here at the White House, they all play the same tune. <laughs> uh, Nocturne by Chopin. Harry S. Chopin. <laughs> now I shall play something by Strauss. Margaret Humdinger Strauss. <laughs> Time is running short, and we shall now play a short number. We shall play uh, what I call the Reader's Digest version of the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto by Freddie Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Tchaikovsky, as you know, was born in Rutkin in the year 1847. But he never played out in the streets of Rutkin like the other little children of Rutkin, because when Tchaikovsky was one month old, his parents moved to St. Petersburg. <laughs> Tchaikovsky's second piano concerto. No, I think it is the first one, as a matter of fact. <laughs> the only one in the book. Number one. I've got the music right here. Special arrangement. <laughs> When you hear this, that is the introduction. Then when you hear this, that's the main theme. Then when you hear this, then there is definitely something wrong because that's Greek. <laughs> but you would hear that because we're not going to play it. I have the choice of two numbers, ladies and gentlemen. One is Claire de Lune, and the other one isn't. <laughs> okay, so it's now two bars till 19. <coughs> I mean, two minutes to bar 19. Oh, I don't know if you know that there are three pedals on these grand pianos. Don't let that confuse you. The pedal in the middle is there to separate the two other pedals. <laughs> which should be wonderful news for people with three feet. <laughs> Mr. Goodman, Al. <laughs> What's the matter? What key are you playing in? <laughs> what key? <laughs> what, what, what key, please? See, I'm in Washington, but he's out in Hollywood. I can't hear anything. <laughs> Come on, what key? Well, maybe we should get some fresh air in here anyway. <laughs> you know, millions of people don't know what this little gadget is for. Unfortunately, I happen to be one of them, so you might as well... <laughs> <laughs>
won't have time to play the beginning of this. Can we take from bar 19? They are giving me the business. The Christmas business. <laughs> Thank you. 